Good morning. This morning we read James chapter 4. As you read through this book, you realise why in certain types of churches it is very rarely, if ever, preached from. First of all, in preceding chapters we've seen the faith must produce works, otherwise it's not real faith. And here we see the reason why prayers aren't answered. Prayers, James says, prayer is not because of a lack of faith that prayers aren't answered. It's because you come to God with wrong motives. Uh, when you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Imagine a prosperity preacher preaching that, um, because that it undermines the entire basis of their faith. You, why does James say you don't receive? It's not because you don't have enough faith. It's not because you haven't planted enough seed in a particular ministry. It's because you ask with the wrong motives. You desire worldly pleasures so that you can enjoy the things of this world. And how many people who give to prosperity preachers want to get rich so they can enjoy the pleasures of this world? You're not going to receive, folks. No wonder they don't like the book of James. James goes on to challenge uh, pride. He challenges uh, being worldly. Friendship with the world means enmity against God. We have to stand out against the things of this world, the powers of this world. And we're not always going to be liked. We're going to be spoken against. Remember, it's the rich and the powerful who control the voices that people hear. And so we, if we're speaking out against them, we're going to get some pushback. But he says, God oppressed, opposes the proud, but will show favour to the humble. So it's a challenge to pride. Let's be careful. Let's not be battling each other, slandering each other, running each other down. Um, I have been very careful during this current crisis not to criticise what other ministers have done. Some have been more cautious than us. They've closed their buildings for longer. They've um, uh, been very cautious about how they meet people. Some have been uh, more um, dangerous than us. They have broken rules and laws. They've gathered together when the government has said that they shouldn't. Each man is, and each woman is accountable to God for their actions. We have taken our line and we won't judge our neighbour. We will not judge another man's servant in this matter. We, however, do what we believe to be right, which is to obey the law, but still seek to serve God's people in the, the, the richest way that we can. But we won't judge a brother or sister. We will stay true to what God has called us to do. And God will well, tell us at the, at the day of judgment which of us was right and which of us was wrong. Until that time, we will judge no one. And then he says, don't boast about tomorrow. Don't think you can go off and make money tomorrow. Boast that you're going to go off and, and get rich in the future. You don't know what tomorrow will bring, whether it will bring good things or bad things, or even whether you will be able to live until tomorrow. So what we have to do is we have to live under the permanent knowledge of knowing that uh, we are at the pleasure of God. God controls our life. He decides how long we live. And so I don't think this is a command that we legalistically have to obey every time, you know, I'm planning I'm going to uh, ride my bike tomorrow if it's the Lord's will. I don't think we have to say that every time we say something that we're going to do the next day. But we do have to live our lives with that attitude. If it's the Lord's will, we will live to do this or that. And we have to have that attitude ingrained in our mind. We can't take for granted even one day. Well, the Lord bless you and uh, keep you as we seek to obey him and live for him.